your memo file is DDR for memory. So with the recent release of the X99 platform, a prerequisite in order to get on this platform is the fact that you need DDR4 memory. Now you may or may not know, but DDR4 memory currently commands a hefty premium over DDR3 memory. And depending on where you live, that premium can sometimes be quite a lot. However, that being said, DDR4 memory does have its benefits. And that is that it uses less power and it's also faster. So DDR4 memory comes in with a base requirement of 1.2 volt, as opposed to DDR3 memory, which needs 1.5 volt. Also, the base speeds of this is 2133 megahertz, this being just released as well. When DDR3 was just released, I remember it having, a, a, I guess, a base rate of around 1333 megahertz. So you're getting more speeds using less power. However, it does have a premium at the moment. So I started checking prices for DDR4 memory, and it seemed to be wherever I checked the price of what country, whether it be Australia, the US, Japan, or the UK, Crucial kept coming up on top as offering the best price, i.e. they're giving us the best value for money. Now this kind of reminds me of the MX100 that I recently reviewed. It was a really competitive product, it had good speeds, it was a solid product with a solid warranty, and the price was absolutely jaw-dropping. It was a 256GB SSD coming in at around about $110, and that was retail price. So this is the same deal. This comes in at around $250 for a 16GB kit, and at those prices, I mean, it's actually not too much of a premium over DDR3 memory. Now, I've, I have seen it in the States going as low as $200. So currently, the prices of crucial DDR4 memory are not that bad. With all that being said, today I'm going to be reviewing the crucial 16 gigabyte or 4x4 sticks quad channel kit of DDR4 memory. This stuff comes clocked in at 2133 megahertz base clock with timings of 14, 14, 14, 36. Now, today I'll be running a series of benchmarks on productivity benchmarks. I'll also throw in a gaming benchmark and I'll be comparing it to DDR3 memory. This stuff is clocked at 2000 megahertz. I'll also be overclocking this stuff, throwing that in the benchmarks, and then I'll be doing a conclusion where I talk about overclocking and some other uh, different factors involved with the crucial DDR4 memory. Let's move on. So let's move on now to the benchmarks for the DDR3 memory and DDR4 memory, the crucial DDR4 memory. Now this stuff at by default is clocked at 2133 megahertz and it's a quad channel kit. I managed to get it up to 2666 megahertz and I'll put the timings in the description below for you guys if you wish to check out the more itty gritty details. Uh, compared to DDR3 2000 which I could only get up, that was the max speed I could get. This was a dual channel configuration on the Z97 platform. So some of the differences you see in the following benchmark will be attributable to the differences in the platform and the CPU's IMC. So the first benchmark we have here is the Ida64 memory benchmark, which the DDR3 memory, as you can see, absolutely got eclipsed by the DDR4 memory. It was a no contest, except for the latency times, which are slightly better on the DDR3 memory. Let's have a look at these figures quickly here. And we have here the copy speeds, 29,187 megabytes per second, and the read speeds, 21,422 megabytes per second. Looking at the write speeds, it's scored 26,080 megabytes per second and it got the timings there the latency was 50.8 nanoseconds contrast this to DDR4 memory at 2133 megahertz which was its default speeds it managed to score 49,104 megabytes per second on the copy speeds the read speeds scored 46,177 megabytes per second and the write speeds were 51,249 megabytes per second however it did have a worse latency here with 69.5 nanoseconds so almost 20 nanoseconds behind the DDR3 counterpart however when we did overclock this memory it did manage to score copy speeds in excess of 56,000 megabytes per second that's right it scored a, a score here of 56,914 megabytes per second on the read speeds it scored 52,071 megabytes per second and the write speeds which were barely remained untouched were 51,390 megabytes per second this was also also, it brought the latency down of the memory to 59.6 nanoseconds. So, Ida64, it shows the differences between, especially between the platforms, the memory, and everything. I guess quad channel versus dual channel, C97 versus X99. Let's look at Cinebench, the R15 benchmark. This is part of the Cinema 4D package, the crucial DDR4 memory at 2666 
megahertz managed to score 1264 points over its default speed of 1212 so overclocking memory especially in this benchmark does prove and does show to give benefits so that's a good thing i'm not actually going to show the benchmarks on the ddr3 memory here because it would be comparing a four core versus a six core 12 threaded cpu so that's not really going to show the actual memory uh, looking at skyrim this was another bench where you can see the ddr4 memory the overclock is actually beneficial to fps this is the only game in my arsenal that i know gives results with ram speeds every other game showed practically little to no results this however actually responded with a quite a significant increase in frames uh, it went from 175 fps all the way up to 185 FPS just with the memory overclock alone. So that's quite impressive. Uh, looking at boot times, however, when we look at Windows 8 boot times, they remain virtually unchanged. I mean, this was practically probably my human error. It was actually slightly slower, but this is probably attributable to human error, me clicking the stopwatch, just a little bit slower. So honestly, RAM speeds don't make a difference, especially in DDR4, to boot times. Let's look at Adobe CS6, Premiere CS6. Here we have here, again, there was not much of a difference. People say there's a lot of difference in RAM speeds for rendering. However, in this particular time, or in my particular benchmark, it didn't show any increase at all. So again, the difference here was negligible. There was no difference at all. However, I must admit, I've only got one SSD going at the moment uh, and I've only got 16 gigabytes of RAM. Maybe if you're making a massive project and you had four drives in RAID 0, it might make a difference. I'm not too sure in that regards. However, let's move on now to Prezona Studio 1, a mix down. So everyone loves a good old mix down. And this actually scored a, yeah, again, there was no difference here. It was 11.98 seconds versus 12.05. And I did hit the stopwatch, so the difference could be attributable, again, to my human error here. Uh, looking at WinRAR, again it's the same benchmark human error they're pretty much the same there's no difference here at all in regards to WinRAR as well okay so that's the benchmarks done and let's move on now to a conclusion where i'll talk a little bit about the overclocking as well because that's pretty much half the fun with the memory is actually overclocking it so in conclusion, we saw in the benchmarks that when the applications can take advantage of the higher memory speeds, then they do show benefits. However, in the real world, a lot of applications still can't take advantage of these higher RAM speeds. And so we didn't really get any big figures except for Skyrim and the Cinebench. So, I mean, those two did show an increase, which was good, but currently a lot of programs can't take advantage of these higher memory speeds. However, that being said, the DDR4 Crucial Memory, everywhere I check in the world, it currently has the best price, which is actually really good, and I'm really happy to give a review for Crucial, knowing that we're getting the best value for money whenever we buy Crucial products. Same with the MX100, that was a fantastic SSD for the money. This Crucial DDR4 memory is no different. It's fantastic value for money, and I can highly recommend it to anyone. Now, let's talk about overclocking, because that's a funny thing, right? Overclocking this memory was actually a lot of fun. In the BIOS, you can unlock so many different profiles, and then it pretty much, it takes you no time to fine-tune your overclock. So, for instance, I managed to just whack in 2,666 megahertz slow timings. I could boot up at 1.25 volt, and then from there, I just slowly crept my timings down until it couldn't boot. And then I slowed down, and I found my uh, fastest overclock pretty quickly at 2,666 megahertz. However, that being said, I couldn't overclock it any higher due to MSI's motherboard. It actually wasn't Crucial's fault. This stuff could have gone higher, in my opinion, except I couldn't find the clock strap feature that MSI promises on their motherboard. So this is not Crucial's fault. It's actually MSI's fault. They have to update their BIOS and implement the clock strap feature. Because whenever I try to implement a... Uh, overclock on the memory even the auto the xmp3 3 gig profile it would overclock the base clock and i'm like okay so i tried starting up my computer didn't start up at all and i'm like okay well this isn't a clock strap this is actually overclocking the base clock which overclocks everything so yeah no surprise that it didn't start up at 125 megahertz so anyway that being said amazing value for money overclocks really well I will say one negative though, crucial, what is going on with the color scheme on this RAM? Uh, the green PCB, I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, everything nowadays is coming out with a, a black PCB. So honestly, if this stuff was black, I'd imagine it would sell that much more. It'd be the best value for money RAM. It'd also be the best looking RAM out there. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised that they did go with the green PCB. I thought that was a little bit of a sort of a negative, I think, because, um, you know, maybe it reminds me of like 1990s tech. But anyway, 
Besides the green PCB, everything on this RAM is an absolute win. I can't give more of a kudos to Crucial for making amazing value for money memory. And if you guys enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the Crucial DDR4 memory, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. And I look forward to giving you guys another tech video very soon. Anyway, peace out for now. Bye.